All right, the topic of this video is the checks that other parts of the government have on these agencies that live within the bureaucracy, right, that live within the executive branch. We've talked about in class a little bit about how significant and influential these agencies are. Um, so it's just important to note that there are checks. There are things that other parts of the government can do to kind of keep them under control. Um, we're going to focus on the actions of the president first. So the president... Um, appoints the leaders of many of these government agencies, cabinet positions, uh, independent executive agencies, independent regulatory commissions, right? The people that lead these agencies are appointed by the president uh, and they can also be removed by the president at any point. So there's definitely like loyalty to the president, right? Um, these people get their jobs because the president nominates them, but also if they conduct their business or they move the agency in a way that goes against the president's desires or policies, then the leader of that agency can be removed at any point and replaced by somebody else. So that is a major check on the actions of these government agencies. And again, the president has access to the bully pulpit, right? They at any point can give an interview that like praises the actions of an agency or its leadership or criticizes, right? The actions of the agency and its leadership. So this kind of keeps these agencies under control because uh, the directors of these agencies don't want to be made to look bad. They want to be praised, obviously. Um, the courts, uh, the judicial checks on the bureaucracy are what they always are. It's judicial review, right? So just like when Congress passes a law um, that um, essentially is against like the Constitution, the courts can sort of go through and they can declare that law to be unconstitutional. Or like when the president does something that's unconstitutional, the courts can declare it to be unconstitutional. It's the same thing with the agencies, right? If the agencies are doing something that's against the constitution or not in alignment with the constitution, the courts can prevent that from continuing. Uh, and then it's really Congress that has the most checks on these bureaucratic agencies. Um, we've already talked about like the budget a lot. It's, it's Congress that controls a lot of the funding for these agencies. Um, if an agency is producing results and doing a good job right, and is valuable, then Congress can reward it by increasing its budget for the next year. If an agency is being mismanaged, if an agency is doing something controversial, if an agency is not producing results, Congress can punish that agency by reducing its funding in the next budget. Uh, and this is huge because a lot of these agencies are already competing for very limited budget resources. Uh, Congress also is responsible, more specifically the Senate, for approving all of the leaders of these agencies. So the, the president nominates his secretary of state or nominates the FBI director, but it's the Senate that's responsible for approving these appointments. Uh, it requires two thirds majority for a nominee to be approved. Um, so again, like that, that's a major check, right? Um, oversight and investigation is another one. Congress has the ability to investigate what these agencies are doing and when Congress holds hearings, they can subpoena, force um, the leaders of these agencies or members of these agencies to come before them and testify. Um, and just like when you're forced to testify in court, if you lie to, in a court, that's committing perjury. If you lie during an official um, congressional investigation, that's committing perjury. So um, if uh, Congress believes that an agency is doing something wrong, or is not doing enough, it can call the leaders before them, interview them in very public hearings, um, and sort of get to the bottom of why there are certain problems. So best example, after September 11th, Congress had hearings to determine how a terrorist attack of that magnitude could have occurred in the United States. Um, leaders of the FBI, CIA, other law enforcement agencies in the United States were forced to testify to Congress so Congress could try to figure out like where the problems were that led to that horrible day. Um, and then basically what Congress can do is after it conducts these hearings and oversees these agencies, right, it can pass laws to like deal with whatever problem they've exposed. So this lack of cooperation that occurred between all these government agencies leading up to September 11th, Congress tried to remedy that by putting them all in the same area by creating a new department called the Department of Homeland Security, um, which kind of like forces the leaders of many of these law enforcement agencies to all report to like one individual. Um, there are also other laws that Congress has historically passed, right, to limit the influence of the bureaucracy. So these are just ones you may see on the AP test. We already talked about the Pendleton Act. 
Uh, this tried to reduce uh, the ability of like presidents to just fill up government jobs with like supporters as like a way of thanking supporters. A lot of the lower level government positions today are based on like you getting that job based on performance on like merit based testing. Now, like the leaders of your agencies are still being appointed by the president. Um, but a lot of these other just like regular government positions are like merit based testing positions. So that way, presidents can't use them as like giving them out as like a gift in order to get supporters on their side. Uh, and then the Hatch Act is another one that you may have heard about. This was passed in 1939. It basically just says that members of these government agencies can't use their influence or on their job for like political purposes or gains. This law doesn't apply to the president or vice president within the executive branch, but it applies to many of these people that like work for the government. So like, for example, your, your mailman, which is technically a part of the government, can't come to your home and as they're delivering the mail, they're telling you who you should vote for, right? Or they're wearing a button, tells you who to vote for. Or you go down the street to you know, the social security office for whatever reason, uh, or to fill out a passport, and they're basically trying to politically influence you, right? That that's against the law, right? So these are two examples of laws passed by Congress to like limit the power of the bureaucracy. And then the media um, obviously has the ability to also serve as a check on these agencies. If there's like some sort of scandal going on and they cover it, the people know, then Congress conducts hearings and the president might take action as well. Or if these agencies are exposed as being like super inefficient or like super wasteful of like taxpayer money, then these constant like news stories that focus on that um, could prompt a change or could prompt one of the other like branches that we just looked at to maybe take a look at like what's going on in a little bit more detail. So again, this video just sort of like reviews many of the checks on these like uh, other government agencies.